Okay, let's talk about instincts. Now, I was on a show recently or a ch uh, chat with Deacon Vertiman a couple weeks back at this point. And we started, the question came up, is there a correlation, shall we say, between what is commonly referred to as the voice of God and instincts, intuitions, actually biologically definable, understandable, rational, located instinctual processes, intuitions, and what is commonly referred to as the voice of God. There's a strong correlation between these things, believe it or not. Let's start with intuitions or instincts, for example. Now, in Wikipedia, they defined intuition as information that is g given to you irrationally. That is not what intuition actually is. That is a false definition. So Wikipedia got it wrong. Intuitions are, are actually hyper-rational. They're not irrational at all. They don't just kind of feelings that come over you, man. That's not what intuitions are. They're strongly related to survival mechanisms and they function a lot more intensely in people who are sensitive and actually highly intelligent. Um, there, you can be talking about the same thing. I'll give you the perfect example from the real world. My wife. Yes, my wife. Um, she is actually scarily intuitive. She is outside of myself. She's the most intuitive person I've ever known. And she can be like really, really, really scarily perceptive um, in a way that seems almost supernatural. I'll give you a perfect example. Um, back in New York, I had, I, you know, I grew up in a house in New York and um, I had dated a bunch of girls over the years. And some of these girls had met my mom for extended periods of time from months to years, you know. And some of these girls were actually pretty smart. One of the girls I dated was a, went to an Ivy League school. Um, and they had met my mother over periods of time. The girl who w went to the Ivy League school had been to Thanksgiving dinner with us and things like that. My wife walked into the, to the house I grew up in in New York, met my mother. In five minutes, literally five minutes, my wife knew things about my mother that nobody else had ever gotten. And she was right. That's how scarily intuitive my wife can be. I'll give you another example, and this is a real, this is a, this is a true example. Um, back about a year and a half ago, or at this point, I think, um, there was the guy Harvey Weinstein. You saw all the troubles that happened with Harvey Weinstein. All these women would say, you know, they would go out to have drinks with him, and then they'd wind up in his hotel room, and then he'd try to attack them and things like that. My wife, now once upon a time, maybe about 15 years, it wasn't unheard of that we would have been gone out to like, not necessarily Harvey Weinstein, but we would, have, we would have gone out to maybe parties or bars and interacted with some of the swell sets. Not so much at this time, but, you know, maybe, maybe 15 years ago, um, gone to, like, parties and bars like that with, like, producers or something. And if my wife were at a party and she had met someone like Harvey Weinstein, if she had met Harvey Weinstein, for example, she would, she would have come back within five minutes. She'd be like, that guy scares me. I'm never going near him. She would know immediately. She knew immediately that something was wrong with him. And she'd never go near him again. She wouldn't wind up in a hotel room. She would never go to his hotel room. Because she just gets like that. She gets reads on people, really, really powerful reads on people. And she, you know, her instincts in these departments are usually 100% right. I've learned to trust them over the years. Because of the time with my mom blew me away. She literally five minutes. She knew things about my mom that people who had known my mom for nine months to two years that didn't pick up on. She picked up within five minutes and she was right. So I've learned to trust her instincts over the years. Now, this is related to her being extraordinarily sensitive. My wife is actually one of the most sensitive people I've ever met. Uh, I once described her as somebody who could who could perceive a feather morning in a different room. She was so sensitive. She's like the most sensitive person on earth. And she has a strong survival mechanism, partially because of the chaos of how she was raised. So all those ingredients are put together. She also happens to be uh, smarty boots. Yeah, she's pretty sharp. So all And the sensitivity and all that goes together. Now this is powerfully related to the hearing of the voice of God. In Christianity, you have something known as the still, small voice. Now, that is not unique to Christianity. It's something that transcends all the different religious traditions. Most of them have some variation of that idea, the still, small voice. Now, described that way, you could strongly relate it to inner knowing. 
knowledge in your inner man or tapping into something that is primal, universal potentially, but more importantly, primal and potentially instinctual and potentially rooted in survival mechanisms. It's not that hard to perceive something like that. Let's say for, for argument's sake that there isn't a God and you atheists are correct and there's no God. There could still easily be something known as inner knowing. There could still easily be something known as a still small voice. Now, not uncoincidentally, in times of my life prior to me becoming a Christian, I had about four or five experiences that were powerfully instinctual or intuitive, where I was like, and they were related to situations I was in a lot more danger than I had any way of consciously perceiving. I was in danger, and, and the one time I thought what protected me, I, I had some sort of inner knowledge that I perceived as the voice of God. But it happened to me more than one time. There are at least four other times that I remember off the top of my head where this happened to me, where I was in a situation where I was in more danger than I had any way of consciously knowing I was in. But I perceived it immediately through, through an intuitive process and survival mechanisms, instincts. Now, what's interesting about all of these occasions, one time I perceived it as the voice of God protecting me. The other four times I can remember, I did not perceive it as the voice of God protecting me. But I still perceived it, interestingly enough, as third party. Knowledge coming to me from outside of myself. Things guiding me outside of myself. I didn't necessarily think it was God. I thought it was sort of instincts. But I still perceived it as outside of myself. So in a situation where survival mechanisms start to kick into gear, it's almost as if your body is a supercomputer. It's not almost as if. That's actually what your body is, a supercomputer. And oftentimes you are processing information faster than you, the conscious human being, know, can, can fathom. So you are, you are experiencing, you are taking in data and you are taking in actions and significance of actions, processing really, really quickly, but you are processing underneath your own level of your conscious awareness because it's happening faster than you, the actual human being, can perceive. So you still experience the whole thing, the whole transaction as third party, something happening to you. That's exactly how my wife would experience her intuitions if she met someone like Harvey Weinstein in a bar, she'd just get a really strong feeling and be scared of him <laughs> and wouldn't, wouldn't go against that feeling. Now, that's not necessarily the voice of God. That's not necessarily God's warning you, that guy's evil. That's not necessarily what's happening. But if it were that and a religious person described it as that, that's just a little bit more intense of a version of the exact same experience. That's what I'm trying to point out. There's a strong correlation between these things. It isn't, it isn't out of the question, especially now that my wife is a practicing Christian, a pretty strong one, for her to do, have the same type of experience. Be in a bar or a party and meet someone like Harvey Weinstein and come running back to me and go, that guy, God told me that guy was evil, but it's not necessarily God told her that guy was evil. It's the same type of experience, just a little bit more intense version of a powerful intuitive feeling or a powerful instinctual feeling. So there's a correlation between these two. And in Christianity, like I said, uh, like I said, we call it the still small voice. Now there are ways of cultivating that still small voice, and those ways would be similar whether God exists or not. And those ways would be connecting with an inner knowing whether God exists or not. You can read Sam Harris's book, where he starts talking about um, doing Buddhist disciplines. Buddhism is basically atheism. It's rooted in atheism. There isn't a deity in Buddhism. But you still practice forms of meditation to try and connect you better with that inner knowing or that still small voice. Uh, Christianity, we have a practice known as fasting. And what's happening in fasting is you are trying to crucify. Uh, we talk about this a lot in Christianity. One of the key philosophical aspects of Christianity is crucifying your carnal nature. The Bible says to be carnally minded is death. Death, yeah, death. Be spiritually minded is life and peace. 
one of the things they, that we try to do as Christians is crucify our inner nature so that we uh, uh, crucify our carnal nature so that we connect better with that inner knowing. Now, we perceive that inner knowing as the voice of God, but it is strongly related to every other tradition where they perceive the same event differently. It's just something to think about. Just something to think about. It's what I started to talking about with um, Deconverted Man. So, I mean, that's all I'll say for now. I'll make more videos on the subject in the future. But that's just a, an interesting way to start perceiving it. Because that is actually kind of the beginning of a biologically understandable voice of God. Voice of God is something that, you know, a scientist can actually perceive. Because it's not that hard to imagine that if there, even if there isn't a God, then we're an animal. Then if we are an animal, your, your, instincts, your instincts as an animal would be sort of like a supercomputer and it would be connected to the supercomputer that is life. So you would have ways of perceiving that are much deeper deeper.